I had to cut ties with my little watch step tracker because I'm convinced it was rubbing up my hand eczema. I took it off last night before going to bed and my skin already feels better. It's whatever is in the watch band, plus it's just the combination of the sweat getting trapped up under there. I swear, I I'm convinced it's that. Um, I'm gonna give it a full week of not wearing it and see if my hand eczema clears up. I don't think you can see it so well, but like right here, I have this itchy patch from the depths of Hades. Like. I'm contemplating chewing my knuckle out. <laughs> yeah, it's so itchy. Cause sometimes if I wear a lot of costume jewelry on my wrist, I get, I get like, <sighs> bright eyes. I find it interesting. I don't typically have issues with earrings but if I, that being said, if I do wear certain earrings, I find that my earlobe starts to feel a little warm, a little hint of an itch. But the thing about most earrings for me is I only wear them for maybe a period of like four to six hours at the most. That, that's even a lot. I tend to wear earrings just for, you know, the day, but as soon as I get home, I take them out. As a matter of fact, the more piercings you have, the greater the risk that you have uh, nickel sensitivity. My ear piercing experience too was a bit much because I went to one of those places like Claire's in the mall, which you should not do, um, where they use that gun, which is not the best way to pierce ears. And they were like figures. I go there on the day. I, I must have been, gosh, how old was I? I must have been eight. Yeah, I think I was eight. Um, of course, I show up on the day that they're training a new gal and they decide it's going to be a brilliant idea to pierce my ears at the same time. Training gal on one lobe and teacher on the other lobe. And so you can't tell because I'm not wearing earrings, but one hole is lower than the other. So if I wear dangly earrings and you look closely at my earlobes, you can tell. I mean, it's not obvious enough to like really be stand out, but yeah. You're supposed to twist the posts, turn them, so that that little canal where the hole has been made will epithelialize. And they told me specifically, they told me, don't do that. So they were so painful. And I remember when it came time to take the earrings out, it was like nauseating. <laughs> that was kind of a, it was a kind of a prolonged period of time. And I was always terrified that the holes were gonna close up. They never did. This Pecom water barrier sunscreen, um, I'm liking it. This was a 2023 sunscreen favorite. Yes. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, this is the original Dawn Platinum Power Wash dish spray that I purchased from Costco, I wanna say three years ago at this point. Yeah, yeah, that long ago, it has lasted me. Now remember, I bought it and it came in a pack that had this bottle plus two refills. This is refill number one. I still have another refill down there. <laughs> This is my little under the sink area, which is very similar as a matter of fact to my under the sink area before. I've got my refill here. <laughs> you guys are like, all right. Kind of need to tidy this up a bit more, but this slides out. This is what I store dishwasher pods in. I've got some dish soap here and then the refill. This is these little pods for cleaning the garbage disposal. And then, oh, update on these. Remember I purchased these with you guys several weeks ago to get rid of an odor in my dishwasher? They worked really well. I'm gonna use the remaining two to clean out my washing machine though. You can also use them there. Um, but yeah, I kind of need to tidy up in here because <laughs> God forbid if there's a fire, it's gonna take me forever to get to the fire extinguisher. Eek. This is how you can tell this is an older house. This hold a bag, I feel like this is not something that you see very much anymore. Um, I've got some 
bags there for my Walmart delivery. But yeah, this Dawn Power Washer stuff, it works really well. I love the spray on it. Um, and I just let it sit in the sink. My sink isn't that dirty that I need to resort to touching a sponge. So I'm just gonna let that sit and then rinse it all off and consider it done. Still loving these slippers. They're really comfortable, although they kind of trick my brain into thinking I'm wearing actual shoes. And I've almost accidentally walked out of the house in them and I don't like to wear slippers like outside because that kind of defeats the purpose of having house shoes. Mr. Pumpkin Scarecrow over here. This seems to be my fall vibe this year are these little pumpkin scarecrows. I just think they're so cute. And this guy in particular who I got at the antique shop, he sort of reminds me a bit of like a cheerier version of something out of Sleepy Hollow slash The Wizard of Oz. I don't know. He's like a hybrid between the two. Like the little hat reminds me of a crossover between the Wicked Witch in Wizard of Oz and the Scarecrow. And he's tin, so he's like the Tin Man. He's like representing all of them. But then at the same time, like the stain on him kind of reminds me of something that you might see in Spooky Hollow. I want to get like a fake glowing log. This fireplace is, I need to figure out what the situation is actually with this fireplace. I was told that this fireplace is inoperable. I don't, honestly, I don't know what the full story is here. These are questions I should have asked. I don't ever plan on actually having a fire in here. First of all, I don't, I don't even get why they put fireplaces, but anytime I point that out, I always have some Houstonian pipe up. Oh, we use our fireplace all the time. And I can see, you know, the temperature does drop here randomly for like a couple of days in a row and everybody's like scrambling to get warm. I think it would make sense in those situations so I can see it. Plus a fireplace is always like really cozy. All this backstory to tell you, I eventually want to get some kind of fake electric log thing to put in there make it cozy looking in here, but not have to light stuff on fire. Because I grew up with a fireplace and having fires in the winter, loving it, loving it. But now that I'm an adult, I have no desire to maintain a fireplace <laughs> whatsoever. Like I remember roasting marshmallows in our fireplace and my sweet vintage Halloween garland, looking so cute there. I don't know why I dragged that out word finding word finding i'm sitting on the floor wrapped up in this walmart blanket let me tell you i bought this on an end cap at walmart i think i've mentioned this a fair number of times and those of you guys who watch the vlogs regularly are like oh no here she goes again telling us the story about the walmart blanket that she got on the end cap for five dollars and she only thought it was gonna last a couple of weeks and here we are six years later still having to hear about this yeah yeah, and it's Christmas theme, but I rock it all year. I don't care that it's got Christmas trees on it because why not? So before I finish getting ready for my day, today I'm really excited because I'm actually gonna go to this restaurant. I'm not gonna go like this. Maybe I should, maybe I should rock the blanket skirt. I'm gonna go to this new newer uh, restaurant I've never been to called The Ginger Mule. It's a vegan restaurant and I'm really excited because they have some really interesting looking options. Y'all remember I bought these damp rid bags at Costco? What was it, about a month ago? And I put this one under my bathroom sink. Check out the situation. I don't know if you can see that. That's all water. That is wild. That is wild. So yeah, these definitely do what they claim to do. They definitely soak up the moisture. And no, I don't have a leak under my bathroom sink, but it just seems to get moist under there. I, I don't know. I don't want to think about it. <laughs> Move over soy sauce. You guys need to try this. It tastes delicious on vegetables. You can actually make a broth out of it, this yandu. It's a Korean flavor booster with a fermented soybean essence and vegetable stock. It's really good. Like I'm not one, I don't like soy sauce so much. I mean, I like it, but a little bit. This, um, I could drink. <laughs> it's really good. I highly recommend it. It comes in a cute glass bottle. 
I got it on iHerb. They have another flavor too that I might give a try. I think a spicy one. Let me know if you've had it, but yeah, it's really good. Alright, they have a burger place, a ramen bar, and then a common bond is a coffee and bakery. the kids menu <laughs> brunch all day fresh juices mocktails that might be fun to get mm -hmm. I might get one of those I got a blue spirulina shot this is the appetizer tofu sticks. They're supposed to be like mozzarella sticks with dipping sauce. And this is my entree. I got the Buddha bowl. So good. Delicious. So the food was amazing. 10 out of 10. Highly recommend this restaurant. The tres leches cake blew my mind. Um, now in the next series of clips, you're going to notice, wait a minute, she's wearing that watch again. Why did she bore us to tears this morning going on and on about how she wasn't going to wear the watch anymore? I absentmindedly just picked it up and put it on my wrist. When I got home, I saw it there and I was like, oh, my watch and completely forgot. I was not going to be wearing it. So yeah, I've stopped wearing it above outside of these clips though. So I still haven't found any kind of seating or anything out here. I kind of go back and forth, honestly. Like I have those little pillows there more for comedic effect, I feel is an appropriate thing to say because it's not like anybody's going to sit there. Like what, what is the pillow even there for? Originally I had a cooler there, but I moved that out of the way. Um, I'm also thinking, don't hold me to this. Please don't hold me to this because it's just a thought that's going in and it's percolating through the gyri and it's gonna go right out, okay? So just, just humor me, okay? I'm thinking of putting some plants out here because it's a sunroom, hello. And I think that that would be nice to have some plants. But then it's like, do I have the best track record with plants? Those of you who have been here for a while, you know. However, in my defense, in my defense, my other apartment had horrible lighting, horrible, like no natural light. Even I had like a little patio space there and it got like no sun. It was very difficult to get anything to grow there. So here I get a lot of natural light in the sunroom in particular. So I think I will have better luck. Prior to me being on the internet, okay, I, you know, my backstory, I had really, really, really amazing success with a spider plant. Now this was in Colorado, but I'm thinking a spider plant would be the way to go because let me tell you, I put that spider plant through Hades and back. Um, yeah, I'm not a good pet. I'm not a good plant owner. When I tell you I put this through the mill, it was during my college days when I originally had this plant. And I left it, I was in the middle of a move. I left it in the trunk of my car. Like I had a four tour station wagon. I left it in the back of my car because I had a station wagon. 
in Colorado overnight, it froze, it resuscitated itself from that freeze and continued. But the best thing about these little spider plants is they're the gift that keeps giving because they put out these little babies and you just clip off one of the babies and put it in like a glass of water and it sprouts little roots and then you can plant it and you get another plant. So I had a couple after a while. Um, after college, I took that plant and I had it in my apartment in med school. And it wasn't until I left Colorado to move to New York that I got rid of the spider plants altogether. And I don't know what I did with them, honestly. I think I just, yeah, I don't know. But they, they really were with me for a long time. That's like, yeah. So I'm thinking maybe I would like to do a spider plant because like I said, there are actually hooks out here already. So I don't have an excuse. Like a spider plant, there's a hook there, there's a hook on each corner here, and then there's one there. Just came in with my tretinoin though. Now. You know, topical retinoids, they not only help when you use them consistently with wrinkles, fine lines, skin smoothness, but they're also very valuable in improving hyperpigmentation, sunspots, age spots, post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. And in terms of treating melasma and hyperpigmentation, they're really valuable to use in conjunction with your hydroquinone because they kind of exhibit some synergy together. Um, check out some of my videos on hydroquinone. I talk about using a topical retinoid along with it there. But uh, yeah, hyperpigmentation is challenging because it's a complex issue. You know, it's not just one entity. Now, I would never go to sleep like this. Don't go to sleep with your hair like pinned up because it puts a lot of traction on your scalp and can lead to traction alopecia. So I don't do that. Right before I get ready to go to bed, my hair is like gonna be completely, pretty much almost completely dry. I take it down and I just go to sleep with my hair down. You can wear a silk or satin bonnet though. That really helps cut down on frizz and breakage especially if your hair is more fragile, like maybe because of your hair type or just you've had a lot of um, hair dye experiences, color treatments, chemical processing that leaves the strands a bit more vulnerable to breakage. Going to bed with uh, a satin or silk bonnet on can really help cut down on that quite a bit. Um, anyways, guys, I'm gonna wrap this vlog up here. I hope you're having a great weekend. Thank you so much for coming along today with me. I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.